Both of these are TP-Link Wi-Fi extenders, but they're also Ethernet over power line extenders, which means that you can plug them both into different parts of your houses. They will connect to each other and your network can be extended through the existing power lines in your house. The one on the left, the WPA281, you can no longer buy from TP-Link, it's an old model. The one on the right, the AV500, is still for sale. The one on the left, the WPA281, broadcasts an insecure Wi-Fi channel by default. The one on the right, the AV500, is password protected by default. You can find the password on the back, down here under wireless password. It's hard to read, but it's there. So what I'm going to do is factory reset both of these, show you how to secure the WPA281 on the left, connect them both into this configuration. They will both be broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal so that we can connect to them, whether we're in room one or room two. The first one, the older WPA281, I'll connect directly to my router, my broadband router. The second one, the AV500, I'll place in a different part of my house and I can connect my mobile phones or my computer directly to it using a cable or Wi-Fi. I'll configure them both to broadcast the same SSID with the same password so that my Wi-Fi connectivity will be seamless no matter where I am in the house. So the first thing I'll do is plug the WPA281 in and factory reset that. Okay, so plugged in and it's powering up. Okay, so the first light, that just indicates that it has power. It's not flashing, so that means it's good. The second one, which will switch off in a second, indicates whether there's a power line circuit between the two devices. There isn't one, so the light has switched off. The third one is whether or not we're connected to Ethernet, which I'll do in a moment, and that is the button for the WPS or the Wi-Fi signal. And that indicates that it's on, and there's an SSID being broadcast that we can connect to. I'm not going to connect to it right now, but just to show you, this is my mobile phone, and down here we can see TP-Link 485308, that's the Wi-Fi SSID being broadcast here by this TP-Link. WPA 2A1 on the left. Now, I can actually turn that Wi-Fi off if I want by holding in that button for 10 seconds. I'm going to leave it on and do a factory reset. Now, just at the bottom here, there's a little pinhole at the bottom, and we can just stick something in that for 10 seconds. One cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog, five cat and dog, six cat and dog, seven cat and dog, eight cat and dog, nine. There we go. Until the top light switches off. Now this is factory resetting. That's good now. Now what I'm going to do is plug my router cable straight into it. Just like what's happening in this section on the left. Excellent. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the video, the signal broadcast by this TP-Link on the left is not secure by default. Okay, so TP-Link there, we're not secure by default. So what we need to do is log into it and set a password on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect to it using my mobile phone. All right. Now up here, unsecured network. So if I open up a browser and go to 192.1. 68.1.1 I'm asked for a username and password. It's admin admin. So A D M N A D M I N login. All right. If we go down to wireless down here, wireless security. Scroll down, select that one, WPA PSK, WPA2 PSK. Enter a password. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to keep it really simple. Done. You can use the same password for your existing router if you like. I press save. Okay. It says we need to reboot the device. I'll do that in a moment. The other thing that you can do is also change the SSID, you could use the same SSID on your existing network if you like also. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the default there. Okay, so now down here it says click here to reboot. So press that, zoom out, reboot. Okay, and after some time it will reboot. All right, go back into Wi Fi. And now, and if I look at the TP link here, it's now secured. So I'm going to connect that TP link and enter the password and join.
Now I'm going to plug in this one, which will eventually be used in a different part of the house. Right now, I'm just plugging into the same power supply right next to it for the purpose of this video, but this is not advised. Since they're too close together, and also there's a chance of reduced quality. So same thing, I'm going to factory reset the one on the right, the AV500. Down here has a little pinhole. One cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog, five cat and dog, six cat and dog, seven cat and dog, eight. Well, 10 seconds as well. And we'll notice that down here, there's a new TP-Link signal being broadcast, 5A34EC. That's the Wi-Fi signal, which is also secured, being broadcast from the TP-Link AV500 on the right. They're both broadcasting different SSIDs. The one on the right by default is secure already. Now, also another thing to notice is the power line indicators are both green now on both of them. That's because they can both find each other on the circuit straight away. They're very clever like that. The different models will just find each other like that. There's no need for me to pair them using the pair buttons. It's all automatic. It's plug and play. Anyway, rather than broadcasting two different SSIDs, like this one plus that one down there, I'm going to copy SSID settings from that into that. So to do that, on the secondary, click for one second, one cat and dog. Right. And on the primary, do the same thing, one cat and dog. What they'll do is the AV500 on the right will copy its settings from the one on the left, and there'll be only one SSID now being broadcast by both devices. So this one down the bottom, the TP-Link 5A34EC, that will disappear eventually, but we can see it's no longer there. But now both of those things are configured exactly the way I want them to be. If we look at this diagram, it's like that. My primary is connected directly to the router. It's also broadcasting an SSID. My secondary, I can now unplug from my power pack and place somewhere else in my house. So first, I want to do a speed test, run a speed test. And we can see the speed test is pretty good. Excellent. So it's now time to unplug that. This light on the left will go out. I'll now plug this into somewhere else in the house. Okay, so now I've just plugged that into another part of the house and about a second after switching it back on, the light to indicate it's a power line connection has slipped back up. Okay, so excellent. TP-Link Wi-Fi extenders, which are also Ethernet over power line extenders. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share. Excellent.